With each video I make on the Flat Earth, I get new questions. Therefore, I keep making videos on the subject. And the one question that seems to be popping up lately is why would they lie about us living on a ball and when we really live on a flat earth? And it's very simple. It's about disproving the Bible. Everything about science is the exact opposite of what the Bible states. Now again, taking a look at the flat earth model, this is from the Bible, 100% biblical. First off, it states in the Bible how there's waters above and the waters below. And how the earth is immovable, it's fixed. And how the earth has foundations. How the earth has ends to it. Mentioned 50 times. The sun and the moon are within the firmament. And this is why NASA cannot get past into outer space. The so-called Van Allen belts. So when I make the videos on the space shuttles being nothing more than airplanes, you'll understand. They cannot get past. The firmament period. They call it the Van Allen belts. But in reality, it's the firmament. And like I've covered many times in previous videos, with space shuttles being nothing more than airplanes, according to NASA, space shuttles are nothing more than gliders during supposed re entry. I'm going to show this clip 100% proof these are nothing but airplanes, they're jet powered not coming in for supposed glide-in landing like NASA states. And there's a reason they have chaser planes escort them in. They're simply used to disguise the fact that these supposed space shuttles have engines. And just take a look at this landing. You can clearly hear and see that this supposed space shuttle is acting nothing like a glider. First off, those wings are too small to be of that of a glider. Take a look and take a listen to those jet engines. There's a shuttle. Touchdown. And as you can clearly see from this still, here's one of the two jet engines. And when it comes to meteorites, they're nothing more than falling stars. So everything we're given is false explanations to cover up the lies. And here's a demonstration how those that own and control this world from the very start try to disprove God and the Bible. Just take a look. How everything with evolution is the exact opposite of the Bible. Where it states here in the Bible, Earth before Sun, and evolution states, Sun before Earth. Oceans before land, land before oceans. Fish before insects, insects before fish. Man was created from solid matter, and evolution states, man evolved from liquid. Birds before reptiles, reptiles before birds. There is eternity. There is no eternity. There is a soul. There is no soul. So you see how evolution is the exact opposite of the Bible. Now I'm going to demonstrate how this is satanic. Now taking a look at the law of reversal by Aleister Crowley, it goes back further to Alephus Levy. Aleister Crowley's book of magic let him train himself to think backwards by external means as set forth here following. Let him learn to write backwards, walk backwards, listen to phonographic records backwards, practice speaking backwards, read backwards. So this is the law of reversal. Satanists even say the Lord's Prayer backwards. So again, this is why everything is the reverse of what the Bible states. In the point of teaching everything the exact opposite is when you're told one thing say it's A and when the reality is Z it's too far to go from A to Z the mind can't handle it and that's why so many reject truth there are many Bible believers that have fallen for the satanic system that the so-called elite have created the school systems the textbooks the history channel believing we live on a ball earth now let's read from Isaiah 40 22 
where it states referring to God, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Now taking a look at this nothing more than a composite provided by NASA, does this look like a circle to you or a sphere? And remember, the word sphere existed in biblical times. Take a look at this basketball. Would you call this a circle or a sphere? Same thing. People need to realize that we all been lied to from birth. You need to understand, again, how everything is the exact opposite of what the Bible states. All your answers are in the Bible. Why don't the churches tell us this? They're the ones that are supposed to be telling us the truth about the Bible. Well, here's the problem. Take a look at these hand signs by Joel Olstein. These are all Freemasons in the game. See the 666 hand sign? All the Masonic signs. Taking a look more here. And here's Robert Wilson. The same exact Satanic hand sign. This is how they control society. They control both those that believe in science and those that believe in God. The Bible is truth, but they're steering you off course. Right here, the 666 hand sign, the Masonic hand sign. It's all there, right in front of you. This is not by coincidence that they're all doing the same signs. All Freemasons all part of the game and here with John Hagee again more Masonic hand signs the devil horns these deceivers will never tell you that 9-11 was an inside job the Boston bombing was a hoax Sandy Hook was a hoax all the racial saps are taking place that's their job to tell you a good amount of truth when it comes to the Bible but they're never gonna tell you the absolute truth this is what deceivers do. It's like if you're going to make a counterfeit dollar, you're going to make it look real as possible to pass it off as legit. And that's exactly what these deceivers do. They have millions and millions worldwide deceived. For more reference, taking a look at some more of these deceivers. Again, the double 666 hand sign. All Masonic. And here's Carter Colon. I've had people tell me on my channel, oh no, this guy's legit. If you believe this guy's legit, I'm sorry to say you're 100% deceived. All of them are Masons. There are no heroes in this world. If they were, they wouldn't be on TV. TV is 100% controlled. This is how they control all of society. Like the old saying goes, a picture says a thousand words. All Masons in the game. Take a look here at Donald Trump, a major player in the game today. Again, Carter Cullen, Angela Merkel of Germany. You have Adolf Hitler here as well. I've had some people come to my channel claiming Adolf Hitler was some type of hero fighting off the elite, which is complete hogwash. He was part of the world stage. People don't get it. They never will. Now getting back on topic with the flat earth and showing how the firmament is above us again with the sun and the moon within the firmament. And this is key here from Genesis 1.14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament. This is within the firmament right there. So again, the churches don't tell you this, but this is the truth. Now let's look at evidence with video footage. Take a look as you see clouds behind the sun and in front of the sun. I'm also going to show some footage of the moon within the clouds, proving again of the Bible's truth. Clearly see, this is the sun, clouds behind, clouds in front. How is this possible if the sun is supposedly 93 million miles away? It's not. It's more like a thousand to three thousand miles away. Much smaller than we're told as well. You need to forget everything you were ever told in the history books, in schools, what NASA says, what the History Channel says. It's all lies. With this video you can clearly see 
how the clouds are behind the moon. This is no illusion. The only illusion is what we're told in the school systems that are owned and operated by those that own and control this world, the anti-God system. The truth has always been in front of you. Right there. You just have to open your mind and let your eyes see the truth which is right in front of you. People that don't believe in the Bible, they're completely deceived. Unfortunately, there's no turning back, and that's why they say, get them while they're young. The first thing you do when you step in a classroom as a child, the first thing you see is you see a globe. But every classroom is part of conditioning and brainwashing the anti-God system. And now I'm gonna play a previous video explaining more of the flat earth model and again when the bible states there's ends of the earth understand i'll explain this more in the, in the video coming up the ring of ice antarctica this surrounds the flat earth and of course the un flag just so happens to match the flat earth model this is mockery this is how satan operates and his minions, they love to mock. And for those that are new to the flat earth concept and can't grasp it, don't completely understand, a lot of people's first reaction is what we fall over the edge, it doesn't work that way. The edges of the earth, a huge ice ring, which is Antarctica. And the sun, like the Bible says, the sun moved and the earth is stationary, it's fixed, immovable. So understand one simple thing, everything we're told in the school system, in college, the exact opposite of the Bible, just like evolution, how we all evolve from, from fish to monkeys to humans, the whole ball of earth we're told in the school system is another lie. Everything we're told is a lie. And why do they lie to us about all this stuff? They want to be the ones that hold the knowledge. They want to mock God's people. I'm going to play this video. And there's no moon in this model, but understand one thing. The sun moves a bit faster than the moon. And one concept to also understand is, people that don't get it, at times you can see the moon and the sun in the sky at the same time during the day. That means on the other side of the supposed globe, there's no sun, there's no moon. Doesn't make sense at all. I'm going to play this clip you can understand again how the sun works on a flat earth night and day. See, three hour time difference on the east coast and the west coast get their light. Exactly how it works. And the sun and the moon are much closer to earth than we're told. Only a few thousand miles, not, the sun is not 93 million miles away. It's all lies by NASA, the government, we've been all lied to. And also to understand the solar eclipse, like I stated earlier, the sun and the moon move at different speeds, just like a clock. The moon moves at a different speed, a slower speed. That's how you get those eclipses, the solar eclipse. And also, I explained this before, with the 24-hour sun, sunlight in Norway and in Alaska, and the sun moves when it spins around the Earth. It moves. As it spins in and out. So again, when it spins towards the center, during the times of year that you get complete daylight in this region, the North Pole, the Arctic, that's how you, that's why you get those 24 hour sun. And it doesn't happen in the south. The supposed southern hemisphere. For example, in the tip of South America, New Zealand, you never get those 
24 hours daylight. And that's because, of course, as the sun moves around, it's not constant like it is in the Arctic. One other thing, the sun, how it moves from changing the seasons in and out, the sun again is furthest from the ice ring. So the further away you get, the colder it is, of course, it's just holding everything in. Antarctica it circles the entire flat earth. I showed this clip before in a previous video, and this again is truth in plain sight with those that control Hollywood showing us the truth in these cartoons. This is how they do it. They love to put the truth in what seems to be ridiculous, such as cartoons, Illuminati card games, movies, commercials. This is how they do it. They love to mock us with truth with these ridiculous cartoons in this case. Take a watch. It's a long fly ball going back, back. And the ball shatters the sky, bringing the ocean itself down into the sea. Now do you understand how this matches up with Bible, with the Bible verse in Genesis, the waters above. You people understand and get it, what's taking place here. This is biblical. And this is meant as mockery. When people watch this, they have no understanding what this is all about. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without hope and poor. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament. And divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning of the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, the gathering together of the waters called the sea. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. A greater light to rule the day and a lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens, in the firmament of the heavens, in the firmament of the heavens, in the firmament of the heavens.
Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Adjalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Say among the heathen, that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven. All the videos I've been making about the flat earth over the last few months I always get the same questions over and over again I'm going to try to cover them in this one video and probably the most frequently asked question is about the lunar eclipse of course with this ball of earth theory you get the Sun the earth and the moon and with the Sun casting a shadow on the moon so you're only going to see that top portion in this, in this case, the top portion of the moon with the bottom portion being shattered off supposedly by the ball of Earth. Before I show a clip of a couple in the St. Louis area recording a lunar eclipse taking place while the sun and the moon are above the horizon, they unwittingly prove that the Earth does not create a lunar eclipse. Now with this quote from F.H. Cook, The Tresto Plane, According to the global theory, a lunar eclipse occurs when the sun, earth, and moon are in direct line. But it's on record that since about the 15th century, over 50 eclipses have occurred while both sun and moon have been visible above the horizon. Now before watching the video, wait till it gets to the part 
where he sees the moon and the sun above the horizon. And then he sees a shadow of the moon on the upper portion. It should be on the lower portion if we live in a ball earth. Take a look and listen to how he struggles to explain this. And he just calls it an illusion. Take a look and listen. So it's December 10th, about 6.30 in the morning. It's about 18 degrees out here. And we're standing on top of Poké Mounds. It's east of St. Louis. Uh, behind me is a full moon, which will soon be going into a full lunar eclipse as it sets. Kind of a rare experience. While at the same time behind us, the sun is already being bright. This is being a beautiful experience. Oh my! <laughs> so it's about six fifty-five, and you can see we're it's a little bit brighter out here. You can see the shadow creeping across the moon. It's a little hard to see. I'm sure the camera, but in here we can see it clearly. The shadow starts to like cover the moon. Just starts to turn into orange. There's the sun. Okay, so it's now about 7 04 a.m. And over my shoulder, you probably cannot see anything, but through the stacks of the refinery back there, we can just, we can just barely make out a little bit of the moon left. It's about two thirds of the way covered with the first shadow. Now take a look. The top portion of the moon is covered. Again, with the supposed bolt Earth theory, the bottom portion of the moon should be eclipsed, not the top. Keep watching. Turning a pale orange, pinkish color. The only bright morning sun coming up. There's not much, not enough contrast to be able to see the moon there. We can still see it just a little bit. What I find very interesting is I was expecting the shadow to come upward across the moon as it would go down and it would pass into the shadow. And actually, it's going the other way around. The shadow, the moon is here, the shadow is creeping down across the moon, even though the sun's coming up over here, and that must be because of the moon's rotation around the Earth. It's moving farther up, even though the sun's light is actually coming from over there. It's actually coming underneath the Earth. So, even so he's saying the light is coming underneath the Earth, the ball. There's no way. This guy's trying to figure things out based on the lies in the science books. He can't get around it. That is the sun is here, the earth is here, and the moon is back here, and this light is coming under the earth, but the moon must be rotating around even though we're turning, so it looks like the moon is going down. It's kind of an optical illusion. It's pretty cool. So, the sun is scheduled to set at 7.08. He says optical illusion. It reminds me of this video. I might as well show it now. And I played this clip before with the weatherman trying to explain a way why you can see the Chicago skyline 60 miles across, across Lake Michigan. Take a look and take a listen. Found this photo in Grand Mere State Park. This is from Joshua Nowicki. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake, but we're actually seeing a mirage. Again, I pointed this out before, with superior mirages, it would be inverted, not like this. So again, when the foundations are lie, they have to keep lying to keep their lie together, to keep their lie intact. I don't know if he's just playing stupid or what, but definitely, this is no mirage. Let's take a look a little bit, listen to a little bit more. Of the Chicago skylight. Very interesting. Here's what's happening. This is a... A uh, good example of a superior mirage. So Joshua was on the Lake Michigan shore. He was looking towards the west, and Chicago's beyond the horizon. Should not be able to see it. However, with the right conditions, we have an inversion. We have cold air near the cold lake water and some 
relatively warmer air above it. This will bend the image of that uh, skyline back towards the viewer. And so typically we would not be able to see this. This image would be viewable from much, much higher in the sky. And as I pointed out before, a superior mirage is inverted just like this. And you saw that Chicago skyline? It was right side up. You didn't see that inverted mirage. Guys flat out lying or just misinformed. And another example of a superior mirage, again, you see the inversion. And again, another image, another photo of the Chicago skyline. And obviously, these buildings are not inverted. Also note, the sun is much closer to us than we're told as well. They have taken the hearts and minds of our leaders. They have recruited the rich and the powerful. And they have blinded us to the truth. Just like the preacher man said, and they live, they've been blinded to the truth. And the truth has always been in plain sight. With so many clocks with the moon and the sun on them. And you'll see that hour hand next to the moon and the minute hand next to the sun. That's exactly how the moon and sun work. With the moon moving slow and the sun relatively moving at a faster rate. Now, taking a look at this model here with the flat earth with the sun and the moon revolving above the flat earth, again much closer than we're told, nowhere near 93 million miles away, more like 3,000 miles away. So again, understand, the moon moves much slower and the sun moves at a faster rate. Now understanding, bring this down here a little bit, why you get the polar nights and the 24-hour sunlight in Norway and Alaska. When the sun is positioned closest to Alaska and Norway, it's basically rotating over these regions. And that's why you get these 24, 24 hour daylights during specific times of the year. And that's why, again, certain points of the year you're going to get constant darkness down in Antarctica. Now understand, you're never going to get 24-hour sunlight in Antarctica. For the simple fact, Antarctica is the ring around the world. So, for example, when the sun, say its position right here, is moving along, of course, it cannot cover the whole ring and go round and round and cover it. It can only take place near the so-called North Pole. So this is a very short video explaining the polar nights. Now quickly explain the polar nights here in Slavbard, Norway. You can see this image here. Now let's take a look at it on the map. And this is, the, of course, the false map that we are given in the, in the history books, in the schools. So again, it's that simple. Why you get 24-hour nights and 24-hour days in this, in this region up here, again, with the so-called North Pole, with Alaska and Norway in this region. The sun altering its its position on the flat earth down low here. You don't hear about, again, 24-hour daylight in southern Argentina, Chile, in New Zealand, South Africa. It doesn't happen because, again, on the flat earth, which makes the most sense, the globe earth makes no sense whatsoever, easily explained with a simple demonstration. I'm getting a lot of questions about satellites. You know, this is their evidence that the Earth is a ball. 
Now let's take a look at these images of these satellites. Do these look real to you? I want you people that talk about satellites all the time to show me a real image of a satellite. All you get are these CGI images, not a single real image of a satellite anywhere. Why is that? All we get is this fake garbage. You get a CGI satellite, you get a CGI planet, all bogus, 100%. So, for all you people coming to my channel, talking about satellites, make a video, produce real satellites. You can't do it because they don't exist, period. Supposedly, close to 3,000 satellites up in space. Again, all we get is this fake garbage. Now let's look at what ISS has to produce as far as real satellites. With that fake garbage. You get this. All CGI, computer animated. Looks like a video game. Where are the satellites? You don't see any because they don't exist. Look at this. Wow. You believe this is real? If you believe this is real, you're going to believe every single lie NASA, the media, your government tells you. You've been completely blinded from birth. You believe everything you've been told your whole life. And any time someone questions an official story by your leaders, you get angry, you get upset, you get defensive. Because no one likes to be told they've been lied to their entire lives. Keep watching this video, and again, show me where the satellites are. There are none. At least with this fake computer animated garbage, I'm surprised they didn't make any fake satellites. I guess they think, oh, here's, here's one. This must be real. Because it's this video is provided by NASA. But all you get, again, it's computer animated garbage. Your whole life is nothing but garbage. Full of lies. It's all you get. You get angry at so-called conspiracy theorists who tell you the truth. Haters of truth, lover of lies. And some might ask, how does technology such as GPS and other technology that require satellites? It's very simple. All by ground towers, high power ground towers, and under ocean fiber optic cables.